Well, hello, beautiful souls. Here we are again. Um, thank you very much for all the feedback. I've been getting a lot of feedback. Um, most of it's been positive. Not all. Uh, some of you say I'm a senile, senile old git who spends more time thinking than he spends talking. Um, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> I'm not in my first flush of youth anymore, am I? Um, but I made the... Yeah, I get things wrong. But when I started... I, I've been thinking about doing these videos. I know I only started, what was it, three or four days ago. Um, but I've been thinking about it for a while, and plucking up courage. And I was determined right from the start that if I, if I was going to do it, I speak from the heart. I'm not prepared to sit here and read from a script. If you don't like the thinking pauses, uh, maybe I'll start doing a transcript and you can you can read it. Um, and of course, you can always read my book. Love Not Fear, A New Paradigm for the 21st Century. It's on Amazon. You can get it as uh, as a Kindle or as a paperback. I urge you all to get a copy, read it and share it. I want to get these ideas out to people, you know. You can also read the uh, the website that's associated with the book lovenotfear.uk When I write, you don't see all the thinking gaps. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to cover that. And I'm also going to just mention briefly, while I'm plugging my stuff, that um, I also do a, an inspirational blog full of uh, inspirational quotes and memes and there's other videos on there as well not mine other people's um there's a david ike page on there if you're interested and uh, lots of uh inspirational stuff on there that's uh the inspirational blog dot org with a hyphen between the words i'll put the links i'll put the links below i'll put the links below um, in the description. But about my video yesterday, I got some flack. A lot of you didn't really understand what I was saying, and maybe I wasn't... Uh, I got a lot of positive comments about it too, but I got quite a bit of flack. And maybe I didn't express myself clearly. Um, I started off talking about division and trying to heal the divisions. And I do want to heal the divisions. That's what my book's all about. And then I started going off dividing between the left fork and the right fork, the woke and the awakened, and the globalists and the nationalists in the way that I define nationalism. Not in the narrow-minded way that it's defined by globalists, <laughs> obviously. Um, and people couldn't see how, how the two things fit together. So let me just go over that a little bit, uh, go into that a little bit more today. There are two, uh, uh, probably far more than two, but there are two main approaches to life, to the future, to our the future we choose, the future we can build here on Earth at the moment. And one is a globalist path and one is a nationalist path. Nationalism heading ultimately towards anarchy. Um, globalism heading ultimately towards the New World Order and totalitarianism. You can't pretend that that doesn't exist. 
Well, I did say at the beginning was that most of the people in the world want a better world. They only differ in how they think they can achieve it. So I'm not dividing people, I'm dividing ideologies. And those divisions exist, and there's no point in closing your eyes to them. They're there. You can't deny them. Either we have our governments on a national level, leading ultimately to smaller and smaller nations until nations disappear and we have a, a pure, free, beautiful anarchy. Not anarchy in the way that the word is used by those who uh, don't understand it, but real anarchy. People governing themselves. Doing what's right because it's right. Um, and the other path, the globalist path, where it's one world government and, uh, and totalitarianism. You can't deny that. That's the choices that we have. But I'm not trying to divide the people that follow those ideologies. I'm trying to unite the people that follow those ideologies. You see the difference? The difference between the people and the ideologies. Maybe they're right and we're wrong. I don't know. It's possible. Even people that appear to be full of hatred... They just need more love. I'm not asking you to, to hate the globalists. I'm not even asking you to, to I'm not blah, 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 blah. I'm not even asking you to despise the globalists. It's just a different approach, you know? It's like two different religions if you like. And don't get me started on that today, that's for another day. So maybe I should talk a little bit about the, the right-hand fork. The fork that I'm urging that we, we follow. As I said yesterday, democracy works best on a small scale. If you've got a dozen people or a couple of dozen people in a commune, in a community, with a show of hands vote whenever there's decisions to be made, um, then that's real democracy, that's true democracy. But the bigger the group gets, you have to rely on representative democracy and that's open to so much corruption. As we have seen, So I want to keep the decision-making group as small as possible. I don't mean the people that make the decisions, I mean the people who are affected by the decisions. Keep, let's keep them as small as possible, as local as possible. And at the moment, most decisions are made at the national level, which is fine. i like to see more decisions made at the county level or at the borough level. Well, for those of you in America, the state level or the city level, oh. I think whatever it is you call it, I don't know. Um, I like to see all the decisions made as locally as possible, and that's what I mean by nationalism, really, I suppose, as opposed to globalism. It's making the... the the point of having a... People say you don't want to have borders. I know a lot of you don't want to have borders. You say we're all citizens of the world. And yeah, I, I agree with that. It's beautiful. Let's all be citizens of the world. Let's all take down all our borders. I want that. I do. I want that. Eventually. Eventually. But we're not ready for it yet. Before we can have... Well, let's just... I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, sorry, thinking time again. 
why do we have national borders? Because they enable national governments to make rules, to make laws, that suit the people that live in that nation. The culture of that nation, the traditions of that nation. Because one size fits all globalism doesn't work. One size does not fit all. We're all different. Yes, we're all one. But we're all individual manifestations, expressions of the one. As I said yesterday or the day before yesterday. And we have to recognise those individual manifestations of individuality. I spent most of my life, well I've done lots of different things, but I spent most of my life as a travel photographer and writer. And I've been to lots of different countries and seen lots of different cultures and, and, and I love it. But what we have now, we have this dogma being forced upon us, the dogma of multiculturalism, which means all these different cultures are stuck in one country instead of being spread around the world. So wherever you go, it's the same as the place you've just left. I mean, that's not, that's not what I want. And the globalists say that nations hate each other and they go to war against each other. Well, that's not inevitable. It has happened in the past, but there's no reason why nations can't be friendly. Why they can't cooperate. I've noticed over the years, yeah, I'm an old git now. I'm a senile old git. Okay, I accept that. But um, I've noticed over the just in my own country. I mean, I'm I'm living back in England now. Um, the different towns and cities I go to, they're, they're all the same. They've all got their McDonald's's and their Starbucks. And all the big multinational brands. If I want a cup of coffee, I don't go looking for a Starbucks or a Costa coffee. I go looking for the local greasy calf. Where you meet some real people. And they're all different. That's the beautiful thing about them. So people call me a racist because I'm against multiculturalism, but that's not true. One of the things I say a lot and, and write a lot in my book and elsewhere is I'm perfectly happy for my nation to be multi-ethnic, but not multicultural. Where on earth did that stupid idea come from? The idea that people can move into your country, settle there, keep the old culture, not integrate into yours. Cultures that may, be, may have cultural values that are totally different from yours. Attitudes around equality, attitudes around gender. Attitudes around religious freedom. Totally different from the values, traditional values of your country. That's not right. So yeah, I want open borders one day. But first we have to learn how to travel respectfully. And how to settle in other people's countries respectfully. Respecting the people who were there before us. integrating into their way of life. Why else do you come? You might as well stay at home. And as soon as I say that, people see horns sprouting on my head and I'm this wicked racist. 
They think I'm talking about brown people who come to live in Britain. Well, I am to a certain extent. But when did I first start thinking along these lines? When I was living in Spain. When I saw the Brits in Spain not integrating into the Spanish way of life, living in their own little British ghettos, speaking English, eating English food. They live there. I'm not talking about the holidaymakers, I'm talking about the people who live there. They might as well stay at home. They've only, they've only come for the weather and to take the piss. And if we want open borders, we've got to stop taking the piss. All of us. Not just the brown people. All of us. Another thing I talk about that's related. What are these refugees? Now I've got t loads of sympathy for genuine refugees. Of course I have. I mean, I'm, I'm not hard-hearted. Anyone who's escaping a war zone or a disaster. Welcome to come here. As far as I'm concerned, as long as they learn our ways and try to fit in. But I mean, I I I, I did. I was I was born after World War Two. I, I don't remember World War Two. I'm not that old. I'm pretty old, but I'm not that old. Not quite. But my dad fought in it. He fought the Nazis. Um, and when I was very small, I had a ration card. It was the years just, just after the war. Early 50s, I was born in 52. And um, there was still... Rubble where houses used to be because they've been blitzed. Worst in Coventry and London, places like that, but in, all over the country in the big cities there were rubble where the houses used to be. People were bombed out of their homes. Just as people are being bombed out of their homes now in Syria and Afghanistan. And you ask the people in Syria and Afghanistan what it's all about, and they'll say, well, the, well, the West came here and bombed us, Britain and America. Iraq in particular, I mean, Bush and Blair. <laughs> that war should never have happened. And I'll probably talk a lot more about that another day. But if they think, if the people in the Middle East who've been bombed out of their homes think that we in the West are responsible, we in Britain and America are responsible, why come here as refugees? In World War II we didn't go to Germany as refugees. You've just got, to, just got to think a little bit, you know? I'm not saying there aren't genuine ones amongst them. Of course there are. But there are also those who haven't come as refugees. They have come to take revenge. Now, 
And so people coming into the country have to be properly vetted. And they're not. They're turning up in little bubber boats. Escorted here by our Coast Guard. Put on coaches and shipped up to shift off to um, coached off to five star hotels while our own people as homeless people are sleeping in shop doorways. You know, you don't need to be a racist to realize that's wrong. Well, I hope I've made it more clear. I'm not trying to divide people. I'm trying to divide... Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to divide. I'm acknowledging that there are divisions between ideologies. The globalist and the nationalist ideology. Between the ideologies of those who come here to settle and make new lives and fit in and the ideologies of those who've come here to take revenge and to take the piss. I don't want you to hate anybody. I don't want you to interpret anything I've said as being hate. I don't hate anyone. I love everybody. Those who are following the ideologies that I think are destructive just need more love. But sometimes when you give love, you have to protect yourself as well. In your own people. It doesn't stop you loving somebody just because you're protecting yourself. And going back to national borders, let's just look at this again, because some of the people that say we should open all our borders... Some of the rich celebrities that have been saying it, in America in particular, they live in gated communities with armed security guards. Those of you who say refugees welcome, and I say genuine refugees welcome, the ones who come to change themselves to fit in with us, not the ones who ask us to change ourselves to accommodate them. Yeah, they're welcome. Very, very welcome. Of course they are. But people who tell me that... Um, that I should just let anybody come in, welcome anybody, without any vetting... Would you leave your front door open? Would you let somebody come into your garden and sit on your lawn, have a picnic, come into your house, watch your television, help themselves to what's in your fridge, sleep with your wife? <laughs> now, if you wouldn't do it in your house, why would you do it in your country? It's the same principle, it's just a different scale. So I say right at the beginning of my book, yeah, love everybody, but protect yourself. Don't become a victim. Protect yourself and the ones you love. I'm not asking anybody to become a victim. Somebody put a comment on here a couple of days ago. So you won't be saying all this love stuff when they come for you. <sighs> Hasn't read my book. I specifically say, protect yourselves, don't become victims. One day, this is an example I put in my, in my book, one day, 
when we're sufficiently spiritually advanced, maybe another thousand years, maybe another ten, if we haven't become extinct by then, we'll be able to sit and meditate a tiger chases you, you just sit down and meditate and dismiss the tiger from your thinking. But we're not there yet. We have to use other ways of defending ourselves, more physical ways of defending ourselves. All I ask is that you all use the minimum amount of force. But don't just sit there and meditate and dismiss Black Lives Matter and Antifa and the jihadists from your thinking. That won't stop them killing you and burning down your shops and defacing your property. So I hope you're starting to understand the difference now. When I talk about division and unity, there are divisions in society, in thinking, in ideologies. But we shouldn't be making divisions between people. So that's it really. Let me know what you want me to talk about tomorrow. Have a great day. Namaste.